So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. So that brings us to the fourth tone of principle. And it is in this tone, really, that we will see the, the science of man, the science of man, that this is what Jesus is now going to teach, and it will come in sequentially now according to the standpoint of life, life impelling, really, principle as mind and principle as spirit. It's the creative impulsion of life impelling the demonstration of principle. And at the point of mind, impelling that demonstration of principle through the healing power of mind and through teaching. Through teaching. So it says that Jesus went about all Galilee. Oh, I love that. What did we say Galilee was? A circle, huh? Yeah. He went all about that circle, you see. It's a sense of a movement, a great movement. Te he went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of disease, all manner of sickness among the people. And there's a lot of that sense of all, all, all. This is love, 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 huh? <laughs> it says that it touches all, everyone, each one, everyone, all classifications. Mind healing on the basis of one principle. So we have the introduction of that subject of principle at the point of mind, that you feel a great movement there, life impelling principle as mind, as the, the action of mind, the movement of mind, the sense, really, life bringing in that sense of the moving creature that hath life. You feel just such a dynamic life sense about it that he went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and that he went throughout all Syria and affected all sick people and so forth. The, yeah, the term all has a touch, of, of course, of mind and of love, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I just tell you wherever I feel love coming in. Love, 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 you know, love. It, it can be anywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Now, he taught in the synagogues. What a nerve. <laughs> what nerve. Actually, that's very much mind, it, it, to have the nerve. It comes up that it's the tone in mind in atonement in Eucharist. What is that? He acted boldly. That's it. Huh? A bold action. How bold to go in. He wasn't trained. Wouldn't he have to be, a Gita, wouldn't he have to be, tra would he have to be trained as a rabbi to, to do that? Uh-huh, yeah. And he wasn't trained as a rabbi. Who does he presume to be? You can imagine that this is going to stir up trouble with the powers that be there with the pharisaical thought, the pharisaical movement, the pharisaical, I guess, hierarchy and government would all now be addressed by, by principle. You see that he was very much 
concerned with the law and with with the right interpretation of the law. You know, here law comes in again at mind. He, you know, he did. It wasn't the law that he disputed, but it was the tradition of the elders. It was the human law that had been built up around the law itself. And this was uh, called the Mishnah. So the Mishnah was uh, like a fence of laws that had been built up around the law of God that had been, that had been given to, to Moses. And so one of the basic conflicts between Jesus and the Pharisees was over the authority of the Mishnah. You see that? So when, when Jesus or the Bible uses a phrase like the tradition of the elders or the tradition of the fathers, this is referring to the Mishnah, to the man-made laws built up around the law of God. And when the Bible quotes Jesus as saying, you know that it is said, this is quoting from the Mishnah. This is referring to the Mishnah. Whereas when he says, you know that it is written, see, he's quoting from the Bible, from the, from the scriptures. So this comes in, you know, to, to the whole text, very much into the, to the text. So what, what was that Mishnah again after the return from Babylon under Ezra? There seemed to be a need to instill the law into the minds of the people and the hearts of the people so that they wouldn't repeat their previous mistakes and become exiled from the land of Israel. So in the oral tradition, it, which was passing it down from father to son, father to son, and so forth, you can imagine that as you passed it down, it's like that game of telephone, you know, one person starts and says something, by the time it gets to the other end, you can't even recognize it. <laughs> huh? So things would be built up, personal interpretation would come in, would be become established and, and sort of hooked on, linked on to, to the thing itself and would be transmitted from generation to, to generation. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after they had come back from being exiled in Babylon, there was a group of scholars called the Supreme that came together to uh, devise ways by which Israel might be prevented from breaking the Torah. So they felt it was necessary to to build that fence around the the Torah with its 613 original commandments. Yeah, that was the law, the body of the law. Then they felt, well, if the people didn't break those fencing laws, then there was no chance or that they could break the law of the Torah. So they began to, to build that law, and that became then the Mishnah, the tradition of the fathers, the tradition of the elders, the oral tradition, the oral law. It is the it is said. It is said. So it was this set of commandments that Jesus was arguing about. It was this set that he broke. He, he broke those laws, yeah. But what, what was it he said, I've come not to uh, destroy the law, but to fulfill it, right. yeah, to fulfill it. But he deliberately broke the commandments that were fenced around the law itself because they were made by man, they were personal, and he wasn't going to be obliged to adhere to them. 
You see that you have the Mishnaic commandments and you have the 613 Mosaic commandments uh, that are the, the issue. You, you hear that he's contrasting the new logic with an old logic. What is the old logic? An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, he says, though, give him your other cheek. If a man take your coat away, give him the cloak too. The old logic is give back what you get, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, <laughs> takes your eye, take their eye. <laughs> if they <laughs> take your tooth, <laughs> their tooth. It's uh, that old logic, but the new logic is a give back what you didn't get. If they take something from you, give them more of it. Isn't that funny? It's a funny logic. Bless them more. Bless them more, yes. Bless them more. The new logic is give back more of what has been taken from you. Just give, 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 give. He says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. In the new logic, there's no dual value. No dual value. It's a one-value logic. Love your enemies as a consciousness of no duality, you see, uh, what does Mrs. Eddy say? Because thou hast no enemies. You can love your enemies because you have no enemy. Everything is working for you. Everything is blessing you. This is lo what love says, isn't it? That there's nothing against you. There's no againstness in love. It's a consciousness of no duality, only one principle operating in everything. He concludes then that a subtone of principle is soul with a sense of truth, the command of truth, the demand of truth is the expression to express the Christ to express the identity principle. In other words, to be like your Father. Be like your Father. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That this is a very, very high form of, of demonstration. You see that truth is impelling principle to interpret itself truly. I say unto you, what, what is this I? It's the I that is exactly one with, coincident with the Father, and is therefore the true ego, the true I. So the subtone is soul. Can you follow all these tones, subtones? Uh, <laughs> good. As though soul would say, change, you have to change something. Truth is asking you to change your logic to truth's logic, huh? to the logic of truth. Change it. And begins to show us love's logic. Yea, yea, nay, nay, and what it means to have no enemies. And that a consciousness of that is a consciousness that is as perfect as your Father in heaven is, uh, is perfect. Uh, yes, let me see. This is the saving consciousness, really, for any situation. 
you hear soul, you hear uh, the truth, your truth in that sense of identity and coincidence. You hear that in the Christ, the Christ order, the sense of coincidence, how the Christ order is bringing everything to that, that point of coincidence. If you recall that when that order ends with mind, you know, it's a soul, spirit, mind, that that mind is the same mind as the mind of the word, of the word order. So that, that the translatability from principle to mind gives us the same mind individually as the one mind in the word. This is coincidence. Perfect principle and perfect idea.